All right, you guys, sorry about that. Pick up where we were. Forget it, he snapped. Just keep the girl away from my stock. He went back into the shop, muttering under his breath. The mall came back to life. Spectators moved off, shaking their hands, and the three girls were left by themselves. Let's get away from here, Amy said. I hate that man. If I were a tulip, I'd fall over and die just having him around. Hyperbole. Die? Luann looked down at the bright yellow flowers. She was ready to cry again. Flowers die? No, no, no. Not unless you pick them. Maybe we'd better just go home, Ellen said. I don't think I feel like shopping today. Amy felt sick. Okay, she said. Whatever you want. It was just awful. Ellen would tell her mother when she got home. Everybody was looking at us. I'll never go shopping with Amy Trelore again. Outside, the sun was low in the sky. An early evening breeze stirred the banners across the mall's main entrance. Luann lagged a few feet behind Amy and Ellen. The puppet show, she murmured sadly as they started across the parking lot. Amy pretended not to hear. She was waiting for Ellen to say some she was waiting for Ellen to say something. You were fantastic in there, Amy. I loved it when you pulled out the money. I was scared to death of that man. What a beast. Amy took a deep breath. Maybe Ellen wasn't completely disgusted after all. I was scared too, she confessed. But he made me so mad. Luann makes me mad too. But I still don't like it when people insult her. She can't help the way she is. That was something Amy kept telling herself. Lately though, it hadn't helped much. The only time she could feel sympathy for her sister was when someone else spoke sharply to Luann or made fun of her. Otherwise, resentment was always boiling under the surface. I'm sorry, Luann spoiled the shopping, Amy hurried on. I didn't want to bring her with us, but my mother works, and there's no one at home after school. It's hard for you, Ellen said. I don't know if I could do it. You would if you had to. The words came out tartly, and Amy rushed to change the subject. About the picnic tomorrow, she said. What time should I pick you up? She stressed the I ever so slightly, hoping Ellen would take that as a signal that Luann wouldn't be coming. The two girls had made plans for Saturday earlier in the week when Amy had mentioned Rainbow Falls north of town and Ellen had said she'd like to see it. Since they'd be taking their bikes, there was no question of Luann's tagging along. She couldn't ride a bike she couldn't ride a bike, though she tried at least a hundred times. Oh, I meant to tell you, Ellen said, I can't go tomorrow. My uncle and aunt are coming from Chicago for the day, and my mother wants me to stay home. She ignored Amy's tiny gasp of dismay. We hardly ever see them. I'm sorry, maybe we can have the picnic later? Sure, Amy thought of the yellow tulip hanging over the edge of the pot. That was how she felt inside, broken dead. A few minutes ago, Ellen had seemed to understand that it, what it was like to have Luann for a sister, but she wasn't really any different from the other girls who were too busy to do things with Amy when they found out Luann might be there too. People were all the same. They walked in silence to the corner where Ellen had to turn south. I'm really sorry about tomorrow, she said. Amy felt as if her face might crack when she spoke. Have fun with your aunt and uncle. I'll see you Monday. Right. Ellen hurried away. Amy took Luann's hand and offered for the light to change. Sorry. And waited for the light to change. Her sister's face was puffy and streaked with dry tears, but she looked around cheerfully at the busy street. Tomorrow we can see the puppets some more, she said. No way. The toot of a car horn cut through Amy's reply. It was their mother on her way home from work. She waved and pointed to the opposite corner. Amy led Luann across the street and they climbed into the front seat of the car. Amy was squeezed between the door and Luann's soft bulk. Well, did you find the bathing suit you wanted? Mrs. Trelore asked. And then, without waiting for an answer, what's the matter, Luann? Have you been crying? 
Luann nodded. Well, what happened, Amy? Did somebody say something nasty to her? The florist in the mall, Amy replied. She tried to pick a tulip from the pot, and he made a big scene. Luann rubbed her eyes with her fist. And where were you when it happened? Mrs. Trelore demanded. She sounded tired. You certainly couldn't have been watching her very closely if she had a chance to... I can't watch her every second. Mrs. Trelore's lip tightened. Don't be impudent, she said. We trust you, Amy. Luann trusts you. She needs your protection. Afterward, it seemed to Amy that a whole volcano of anger exploded inside her right then. She had heard those words many times before. This time, the anger couldn't be held back. I don't want her to need me, she shouted. I'm sick of babysitting and losing my friends and having everybody stare, stare when we go by. I don't want to protect her anymore. I'm never, never going to take her any place again. Mrs. Trelore's hands on the steering wheel were rigid. I can't believe what I just heard, she said. I can't believe you can be so cruel, so selfish. A girl who has everything. I don't have anything, Amy roared. You want me to drag her around behind me the rest of my life? Well, I won't do it. She had her hand on the door latch, ready to jump out the minute the car pulled into the driveway. She had to get away, away from Luann and from her mother and from the terrible things she'd heard herself sing. She wanted to run and not stop. You can be sure your father will, your father will hear all this when he gets home, Mrs. Trelor said. I'm going to tell him every word of this conversation. He'll be as ashamed of you as I am. She slammed on the brakes, inches from the garage door. Amy leaped out and Luann tumbled after her. Wait for me, she shouted. Wait for me. Luann, you stay here, Mrs. Trelore ordered. Come inside and we'll have some cookies. Let Amy go. She's, behave she's behaving very badly. With her hands over her ears, Amy tore down the street. Cookies, she thought. Let Amy go. She turned the corner, trying not to hear the plaintive cry that followed her. Tomorrow, Amy, the puppet show. Don't forget, Amy, you have to take me, 